Hello everyone from Math 2200, Discrete Mathematics. It's Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks, section 10.10. .10. This is assignment problems, balls in bins. And uh, we saw it the in section 10.9, the problem in which you place n indistinguishable balls into m distinguishable bins. All right, and that number of ways was n plus m minus 1 choose m minus 1. So again, if you want to look back at section 10.9, uh, well that's going to come up again here because we're going to look at different scenarios of placing balls into bins. Some where the balls are distinguishable, some where they're indistinguishable, and some where the bins are distinguishable and somewhere, you know, the bins are indistinguishable. Okay, uh, so here, many counting problems that ask about the number of ways to assign or distribute a set of items can be expressed ab abstractly by asking about the number of ways to place n balls into m different bins. In all the problems presented in this material, the bins are numbered, so placing a ball in bin 1 is considered different than placing a ball in bin 2. Okay, so looks like in this section all of the bins are distinguishable. You can tell them apart. Uh, some problems place different constraints on the number of balls that can be placed into the bins. Problems also vary according to whether the balls are all the same, you know, indistinguishable balls, can't tell them apart, or all different, meaning distinguishable, and you can tell them apart from one another. If the balls are different, then they will be numbered 1 through n, right? So ball number 1 is different than ball number 2. If they're not different, if they're indistinguishable, then they'll all be the same color, or they'll all be no, not numbered. And uh, which ball gets placed into which bin matters, right? Because, you know, putting ball 1 into bin 1 and ball 2 into bin 3 is a different scenario than ball 3 into bin 1 and ball 1 into bin 3, right? Because the balls being numbered, distinguishable, means that where they are placed matters. But if the balls are indistinguishable, then placement won't matter. Alright, so they have a little table here. Right? The table below shows the number of ways to place n balls into m distinguishable bins, right? bins 1 through m. Some of the restrictions on the number of balls per bin imply a relationship between m and n. For example, if there can be at most one ball per bin, then m, the number of bins, must be at least n, which is the number of balls. Uh, if the same number of balls must be placed in each bin, then m, the number of bins, must evenly divide n, the number of balls. Right? So those are implied. Each of the six formulas in the table is explained below based on counting techniques. All right. So we saw this in section 10.9. See, when there's no restrictions on the number of balls that can go in each bin, and you're placing n indistinguishable balls into m bins, m distinguishable bins, the number of ways that could happen was m plus, n plus m minus 1, choose m minus 1. Right? Again, you saw this in section 10.9. Again, if the, if the balls are indistinguishable, and you have to have at most, and you can have at most one ball per bin. Well, then you take those m bins, and you choose which of those m bins, which of them get a ball. And then the other ones will have no balls. Right. So it'd be m choose n. And in this case, m must be at least n. If the same number of balls must be in each bin. And there's only one way to do that, right? If the balls are indistinguishable, right? 
So like if I had 10 balls and two, 10 indistinguishable balls and I had bin 1 and bin 2, you know, each one would get 5 and that's it. There's only one way to divide them up, 5 and 5. Okay. In order to do this, you know, M must evenly divide N. Right. Now, what if the balls can be told apart? You know, what if they're balls 1 through N? Ball 1, ball 2, ball 3, you know, all the way up to ball N, you can tell them apart because they're numbered. Well, the number of ways to put n distinguishable balls into m distinguishable bins is m to the nth power, because you would go through each ball, you know, ball one, and then say, how many choices of bin do I have, if there are no restrictions? Well, you can put ball one into any of the m bins, and then you're applying the product rule. You could do the same for ball 2. I could put ball 2 in any of the m bins. So you have m times m, number of choices. And then ball 3, ball 4, the same all the way up to ball n. You'd have m times m times m times m all the way up to ball n. That's m to the nth power, number of choices. Now, if there can be at most one ball per bin, well, then you have that generalized product rule. All right, you take... Uh, you know, how many, you look at the first ball, ball one, how many choices do you have? You have M. Then when you place that ball in a bin, you can't place any other balls in the bin because there can be at most one. So then the next ball, you have M minus one choices. Then the next ball, you have M minus two choices. And you multiply all those out uh, until M minus M plus one. That would be the MPN, or the number of permutations. And then if each the same number of balls must be in each bin and again you have a uh, you know n distinguishable balls it's going to be the number of ways to do that would be n factorial divided by and then n divided by m factorial to the mth power so for example and I'll draw this on some paper all right, so for again, for example, if I had you know uh, bin bins one and two, all right, just two bins. Right, so m e m equals two, the number of distinguishable bins. And I had objects. You know, let's say I had uh, you know six objects that were numbered, so they were distinguishable. n equals 6. And we have this restriction that the number of objects in each bin must be the same. Uh, in each bin. Uh, is the same. Well that just means there need to be 3 in each bin. Right? Uh, So I guess I could say how many go into bin 1. You could do 6. You could take the 6 objects and choose 3 of them to go into bin 1. Right. And then once you've done that, you know, say it was uh, this one, this one, and this one go into bin 1. And then you have the 3 left and you choose them to go into bin, you know, choose all 3 of them to go into bin 2. And this would be 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial, right? 6 choose 3 times, and then 3 factorial divided by, you know, 0 factorial, 3 factorial. This is just 1. I don't know why I put any of that, right? And we get what they're talking about there. There's your 6 factorial divided by, and then, uh, you know, n divided by m factorial, but twice, right? This is 6 factorial divided by... 3 factorial squared. This is the n divided by m factorial to the second power, the number of bins to the nth power. So that's just one example of why this formula is working out. All right. And then they go and you know talk about the different scenarios. So we'll just you know we'll come across these when we get to some problems. All right. So again, you just got to know, you got to understand what kind of problem are you dealing with. You know. Uh, what what uh, do I have indistinguishable objects or distinguishable objects 
And again, every single one of these is going to be, you're placing them into M distinguishable bins. Right? So the bins are numbered, and it'll matter which bin things go in. Right? So you just have to pay attention. You have to figure out what scenario am I in right? to know what part of that chart you're on, you know, which formula you'll be using from here. Okay, so looking at the activities here, so here, ten, see, 10 identical coupons will be given out to 20 different shoppers. So think of the coupons as balls, and they're identical. 10 identical balls will be given to, the, now the, think of each of the shoppers as bins, shopper one, shopper two, bin one, bin two. So I have 10 dis, uh, indistinguishable balls put into 20 distinguishable bins. And there is a limit of, at most, one coupon per shopper. How many ways are there to distribute the coupons? So that would be this scenario here. Ten indistinguishable balls into M distinguishable bins, but at most one ball per bin. So M choose N, right? Uh, basically, I'm taking the 20 shoppers. I would take the 20 shoppers and just choose which 10 get a coupon. And the number of ways to do that would be 20 choose 10. Okay. Another one. Again, 10 identical coupons. So 10, imagine, you know, it's, imagine these are you know, 10 indistinguishable balls will be given out to the 20 different shoppers. So 20 distinguishable bins in a store. This time there is no limit on the number of coupons that can be given to the customer, to a customer. How many ways is there to dis distribute the coupons now? Well, now we're in that first scenario. I have 10 indistinguishable coupons put into 20 you know, distinguishable shoppers' hands, but there's no restrictions. So it's going to be n plus m minus 1, choose m minus 1. This is like section 10.9 where I have the 10 coupons, 10 zeros, and 20 varieties, 20 categories I'm placing them into, 20 shoppers, that'd be 19 ones in a code. If I was making a bit string code, 10 zeros, 19 ones, that'd be 29 choose 10, or 29 uh, choose 19. All right, so 29 choose 19. Okay. And here, eight, different tasks, so eight distinguishable balls, are assigned to 20 employees. Now again, the 20 employees are different people, so different bins. Eight distinguishable balls are placed into 20 distinguishable bins. Uh, there is no limit to the number of different tasks that can be uh, given to any particular employee. How many ways are there to make the selection? So again, so the first task, you have 20 options. Then the second task, you have 20 options. Third task, you have 20 options. For all eight tasks, you have 20 options because there's no limit to how many people can get assigned to, a, to an activity. So there's 20 to the eighth, and you'd be, you know, you're in this scenario here where distinguishable balls, no restrictions, distinguishable M distinguishable bins. So this would be 20 to the eighth. Here, you know, eight different tasks are assigned to 20, you know, different employees. Eight distinguishable balls into 20 distinguishable bins. Each person can be assigned at most one task though. So this is the 20 choose 8. You have the 20 employees. You just choose which 8 of them get a task, and then the other 12 of them would have no tasks. So 20 choose 8. Oops. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, there are different tasks. There are different tasks. I just said that. Be 20 P8. There are, <laughs> if it was, if it were indistinguishable tasks, you know, for if, it, if all if, if the task if all the tasks were the same task, then I would do 20 choose eight. But here there are eight different tasks, right? So we're in this scenario. Sorry about that. 
where I have eight distinguishable tasks and I have, you know, 20 distinguishable people and, you know, at, each person can get at most one job. So that's, you know, permutations. That's, you know, uh, for the first task, I'd have 20 options, right? Then the, for the second task, I'd have 19 options because I've already given the first task away. And then you have, you know, 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 different ways. And that's the P, that's P28 there. So again, my apologies, I forgot that they were different tasks. Here, 15 identical chocolate bars. So again, 15 indistinguishable balls are given out to five kids, five distinguishable bins. So that each kid gets the same number of chocolate bars. How many ways is there to do this? One. You give each kid three bars. Right? They're all the same bars, so who cares, right? Which three bars could you? One way to do that. Yeah, and that's this scenario here. I have 15 indistinguishable balls and, you know, the same number of balls in each bin. Each kid must get the same number of bars. There's only one way to do that. Give each one of them three. And here, a grandfather is giving away you know, 45 coins in his coin collection to his nine grandchildren. So there's nine bins. The coins are all different. So 45 distinguishable balls into nine distinguishable bins. Uh, and he wants it so that, you know, and he wants to give the same number of coins to each grandchild. How many ways can he do this? Again, this this scenario. 45 distinguishable coins into those nine distinguishable bins, and he wants each one to get the same. So it'll be 45 factorial divided by 5 factorial to the ninth. Number of ways he could do that. So again, this whole section is basically just recognizing which scenario are you in so you know how to count. Okay. Balls and bins, assignment problems. All right, then you have your additional exercises. Again, some of these are assigned, some are not. I would still recommend looking over all of them just for more exposure, more practice, get better at it. And you can look at the solutions if need be. Right? Um, but please, you know, try try to work on the problem first. Try to get it right on your own first, and then check the solution. Don't just look at the solution and copy it down without trying it. You're, you're not going to learn anything that way. And of course, if you have any questions, uh, send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And thank you very much for watching.